Ronnie, just, can, yeah, thanks, Chair. Just very briefly, Mr. March, to drag you back to something you said uh, earlier. You mentioned the jobs leaving London to for, for jobs in the civil service out of the kingdom. Right? Yeah, I heard you say Darlington and Glasgow, but you didn't mention Aberdeen. And that was one of the promises as well. There were going to be 200 energy-related jobs in Aberdeen, and the latest figure I've heard is uh, 35 by the end of 2027. Is that because the jobs aren't required, or is there some issue in getting people to relocate to Aberdeen? Hopefully the sound's OK. Um, I, I, would have to, I would have to get um, uh, my colleagues to respond to you directly on, on that. Uh, I, I don't think there is a labour supply problem uh, in terms of your points. Uh, as you say, there's deep capability in Aberdeen around uh, energy, oil and gas, just transition and uh, green technology. And so yeah, it is a huge opportunity uh, for the UK civil service uh, with regards to uh, energy transformation. One of the reasons we have our, uh, our green freeport in Cromarty Firth and why the northeast of Scotland was, is so pivotal to, to Scotland. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, more broadly for Scotland, this is, again, as Jane was saying, part of our, our pitch. You know, we have five of uh, the top universities at the top 15 in the UK and Scotland now. Uh, great capability and talent. Uh, and we're increasingly able to say, whether it's with the Scottish government or other government departments located here, a career in civil service is something that you can have across different departments with confidence and a move between uh, central government, devolved government, and local government, for that matter, um, and build that capability. So, no, I hope we'll see more places for growth in Aberdeen, as we have Darlington, Glasgow, and others, um, and, um, uh, and and hopefully places for growth is here to stay. Thanks. Well, but 